welcome back to 54A. We've got a nice chunk of Sapili on the lathe. Um, 13 inch, by the time it's trimmed down, be about 12 and a half inches. I'm going to make a bowl and I'm going to use some Joe Sonia iridescent paints on it. So I'll swing the camera around and show you what it is. Right, there we are, a nice chunk of Sapili. Uh, not a lot going for it, which is why I'm going to use some colours on it. I'm just going to uh, finish the edge off. I'll smooth that off. As you can see, there's some holes there where I had the face plate to put the mortise on. So I'm going to shape the back of it first and uh, we'll see where we go from there. I'm just changing over to a scraper now, seems to take more off and I can stand to one side easier. Yeah, that's coming on okay. Uh, worst thing you can do is stand in front of the thing when it's spinning around, especially something this size, which is why I want to stand at the back of it. All right, change your heart, I'll put it back on the face plate. It's easier for me to work this side. And uh, so I'm getting on with it with a, a round scraper, carbide. take quite a lot of wood off this side leaving a nice wide foot because it's a nice wide bowl or it will be I hope well I certainly didn't plan this shape but um, just messing, messing around it's, that's what's appeared but uh, I don't think I like it to be honest I think I'd rather just have one continuous sweep so I'm going to get rid of this ridge That's a lot better. Okay, that's really nice and smooth now, sanded down to 1200 because I want to put some colour on this side for a change. So uh, I'm going to put it red, I think. that dry and then give it another coat. I'm just using these chestnut spirit stains as good as anything else. I always use these and uh, actually it's quite a shine on that it's just down to the sanding. How good you want your piece to look depends on the preparation. 
and that's looking pretty good. I'm quite pleased with that colour actually because it's, it's pretty boring wood otherwise. I'll just give that a coat of wood wax 22, chestnut wood wax 22. That's just that one coat and it's like a mirror. It's beautiful. It's all down to the sanding. So I'm very pleased with that. I should give it a coat of microcrystalline to protect it against nasty fingerprints. And then I'll turn it round. Okay, all turned round and I'm just going over it with a scraper. And uh, get it as flat as I possibly can and then it's going to have a right good sanding. I'm not too bothered about the holes where the face plate was because there's a bowl going to be dug out in the middle of this. So I'm just going to get it as flat as I can. That's looking pretty good. Now I haven't bothered tidying the edge of this up yet because I'm going to leave that. If there's any overspray or anything like that, I can trim it off afterwards. Right, I'm going to give this a right good sanding, look just like I did the back. I won't bore you with that. Yep, I'm happy with that now. That's really smooth. And now, black satin car paint fine coats don't try and cover it all at once with a thick coat it will just run everywhere you can have the lathe spinning or steel just have it on low do for the first coat. Just going to let that dry, rub it down with a bit of double O double O wire wool and then give it another coat and I might even give it a third coat because when I put the Joe Sonia paints on I want it to be as smooth as possible so it runs nicely. Yep, see you later. Oh there you are down there. Little tip before I start applying the Joe Sonja paints. All these Joe Sonja paints, when you squeeze them out of the tube, they're white. No matter what colour it says on the tube, they're white. You won't see the colour until it goes onto a dark background. So I use these little old jelly pots and put the colour on. Then I can't get them mixed up because as you can see, it's white. It's actually green. Right, that's nice and dry now, nice and smooth. So now I'm just going to put a few drops of this Joe Sonia iridescent paint. Just blob it around the middle. Doesn't really matter what the middle looks like because that's going to get dug out. Stand well clear because it will spin everywhere. Nice high revs and give it a quick spin. And you can just see little strands. And I'm going to continue doing that with all five colours. That was the green. turquoise now it doesn't matter what it looks like really I said five colours, I think I meant six. Bit of red.
good in it. By the way, you will need to thin the paints down a bit with the flow medium from the same place. A bit of blue now. going to continue doing that and then go over it again and again and again until I've got enough strands that I that I think looks okay. You can just flick it on if you want while it's spinning. I'll just show you. Whatever way is best for you. Think that'll do. Once you're satisfied you've got enough of it, just leave it to dry for a bit and then I'll hollow out the centre of the bowl. Okay, that's all nice and dry. And next thing is to hollow the centre out. Just going to put a mark about there, I think. nicely I'm not into this golden ratio rubbish if I like the look of it that's fine proportions don't matter to me it's what I like Doing most of this with this round nose scraper, just being very careful to keep a nice crisp edge down there. Okay, I think that's ready for sanding now. Now I'm sanding this down, it's going to go right up to 1200 like I did on the outside of the bowl. It's a lovely finish. At the moment, I'm up to 240. The next one is 320. Now, somebody says, don't bother using 320, it's a total waste of time, skip it out. Now, it makes no difference. Now, that's 240, that's 320. If it made no difference, that'd be called 240. So I'm not going to miss it out. I'm going to use 320. It's just a golden rule really, don't miss a grit out. It only takes a minute.
Now I'm going to attempt to colour this the same as I did on the outside but I'm not going to spray it on because I might get over spray on the black bits. So I'll just put it on with a, a tissue up to the edge. And get a nice clean edge doing it this way. And of course I forgot to put my rubber gloves on again as usual. <laughs> Making sure it goes right into the the grain. Well, that was quite difficult because it's that smooth now. It's really nice. for a couple of minutes and I'll give it another two or three coats right as you recall I left the edge until last just wanted to keep it nice and crisp so I'm going to just tidy this edge up now and then probably put a bit of colour on that as well red hmm I'll just have to think about that one but I'll sand it down first pretty good. A coat of microcrystalline should finish it off. Yep, decided to keep the edge red in the end and uh, I'll put a couple of lights on it so you can get a proper good look at it. Uh, what do you reckon? I love it, I absolutely love it. I'm so pleased with the way this has turned out. I think it really helped putting the red in there to finish it off. Because as I say, the Sapili hasn't got a lot going for it, so a bit of colour seems to have done the trick. Just finished off with Chestnut Wood Wax 22 and Chestnut Microcrystalline. There you go, that's it. Wow. Well, I must admit... I'm happier than somebody that's really very happy with that. It come out better than I thought it would. Really, really pleased with that finish. It's just taking your time doing the sanding. That's the main thing. And uh, I love it. All the colours on that. Iridescent paints. Beautiful. Very pleased and I hope you like it. Uh, I really enjoyed doing this one, it's really made me the most happiest person in this shed. <laughs> so that's it, till the next time viewer, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, leave a comment, I always try and answer them. Might take me a day or two. Um, thanks for watching, see you for the next one soon, bye now.